the crew worldwide From Kali to Twitter Real hardcore fans Boxing ass niggas Consistency cops Police the views We'll pull up receipts for any debates you choose Shout outs to Clan Arky for the dope production Ring gang stay with the best discussions yes. Ring gang radio yeah, 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 what's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Real Talk, where, as always, if shit's real, we talk about it. I'm your host for tonight, as always, Pat Scorpio, the New England representative, and uh, I got my man with me, and I'm gonna let him introduce himself. What it do? Shuttleworth in the building. Soul Wars, the GOAT artist, LB. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, yo. My man LB is in the house. So dig, man. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about some various things tonight. Uh, starting off with uh, um, Alexander Povetkin versus Anthony Joshua fight from last Saturday on the Zone. You know, I gotta make sure I pronounce that correctly. <laughs> Not Dazen or Dazen or whatever. It's the Zone. You know, I mean, it's it's retarded, but fuck it, I respect the brand, the Zone. <laughs> So uh, LB man, you know, why don't you kick some uh, kick some of your thoughts about uh, about the fight itself? Um, it was a it was a good ass fight. It was it was a real good fight. Like the heavyweight division is kind of popping this year. Like you know, um, going into it, I thought Joshua, you know, he was going in there tough. With, you know, with uh, Povetkin, Povetkin event. You know, he always try his hardest. He's used to fighting these giant niggas in the heavyweight division. So, and he got power. So, I knew it was a tough fight. Like, I almost thought it was, like, too tough of a fight to take before Wilder. Because, you know, he could get clipped. But right, exactly. And that, and that that's was, how that, it is. <laughs> yeah, and that was my fear, too, man. Because, like, you know, as, everyone, as most people know, I am a fan of Anthony Joshua, you know. You know, I followed the dude since the Olympics, I followed him since he started as pro. I mean, I famously predicted that in 27, 2015, during Vlad's line, that he would be heavyweight champion, you know, by 2017. Which that actually came true. I didn't even think, honestly, I didn't even think that would come true. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, certain, certain circumstances, you know, happened that, you know, that ended up that way. But that's, that's boxing. That's the, boxing is the theater of the unexpected. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, like when this was announced, I was thinking to myself, this could be a perfect trap fight. Um, because yeah. Vekin, you know, as we all know, Vekin is, you know, has failed multiple PED tests. And in doing so, has also scored some of the most sickening knockouts you've seen in the you've seen Yeah, in the for real. <laughs> like, they're, they're not normal, not like he's. Highlights. Yeah, they're, they're like, like combos. <laughs> Right, I mean, he's knocking niggas out that don't really be knocking. Like Mike Perez, you know, I mean, do had oh. that war with Abu Salam, and you know, and you know, it didn't go down. He was a Abu was a puncher. He, you know, he fought some other, he fought some other cats, you know, but one fucking punch from Povek and had him out. He was in the first round, I think, too. And then the even the other one too, with this was the David Price team. recently. Yeah, David Price recently, exactly. David Price. Now, David Price gets knocked out, but yeah. he got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For a whole other, like, dimension with this knockout. Like, dude, that shit was brutal as fuck, bro. Yeah, exactly. And then another one was to, um, Johan Duhapis. Now, Duhapis is probably the only man alive to have been stopped by Wilder, and Wilder couldn't put him down. But fucking two left hooks from Pavekin knocks this motherfucker out cold. That's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's some uh, yeah. That's some other shit. Now, yes, PEDs or whatever. This motherfucker can punch. So I was thinking to myself, this could be one of those situations where Femi, if he's not careful, can get clipped and then he'll fuck some all shit up. And then I hear it from people talking about you know <laughs> Femi got a weak chin and everything like that. You know you'd have heard it from me, bro. <laughs> I know I would have heard it from you, man. I would hear from multiple people, but they would they, they would give me grief. And then so like when that first round hit, and uh, Pavekin was uh, looked like he broke broke the man's nose early in the fight. No, no, it was I think it was late in the fight. Was it like it was the last little three punch combination when it was near the ropes that did it? But it was it was in the first round though. I mean, remember, 
yeah, 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 you're right. I'm, <laughs> yeah, you right. It was at it was at the end of the first round. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's, and all that's like, cool. and all, I'm seeing all types of blood and shit coming from the man's face. I'm like, okay, this is bad. This is really bad. You know, and then Pavekin, because Pavekin's breach is not, you know, it's not ideal. I mean, um, Joshua's breach is just absolutely crazy. So you see dude, like, leaping in like fucking Roy Jones. I mean, he was laying, like... <laughs> was he, he was landing those, though. Was that? He, he was landing those, though. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Yeah, he was... He was fucking with his with, with his lead hand. He was he, he was he was throwing left uh, look left upper combinations like and they were landing flush. And I'm like this is like I mean I'm thinking I'm over here like this on my on my seat, just like you know just watching this shit. I'm like this is uh, this is this shit. I was working them too like yeah like he had Joshua kind of looking like you know like he was gonna fumble the bag man like because I mean before the stoppage I had it like. I can see that's four to two Povetkin or three to or you know three three rounds apiece. You know the wild thing is I didn't you know usually I I'm pretty good at, uh, at scoring fights, but I, I for some reason I just did not want to score it. I just I, I just wanted to watch the fight. This is probably one of those rare times. But, but that's what was coming back though, and like yeah, like he, one thing one of the things he did like he switched up his style some. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was working that jab to the body though. I mean, he was because like, he knew he that was the case. He, the, the, those jab to the bodies, you know. Because I was, I mean, Joshua's hands. I mean, because the way I guess they're not as fast or it's not as um, dynamic as most fighters. But his, punch, his punches are heavy, and I think right. the body shots slowed Rebecca down a lot, you know. And I think and then, yeah, because he was stabbing him in circles. You know, he was, you know, getting his little back foot boxing on. Like that's real talk. Yeah, you know, he was with it. You was snapping the jab. You know, he had it. He had his own. Look, you know that uh, that Ali, that Larry Holm, just had it down by his waist, just you know moving around. Yeah, yeah. His left hand, was, yeah, his jab hand was pretty low, and I was, and that's what I was also worried to. I was like, if he if, if he lets Perfect and get it inside, I could see him crushing him with a with a right hand. If he's not careful. Yeah, that was, I was like, damn. Man. With one of those uh, perfecting right hands over the top, just really, really just land. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we could be talking about perfecting, you know, the WBA, WBO, IBF, heavyweight champion of the world. Fucking all types of shit up. <laughs> you know, but um, and that, but but then, you know, so, and the thing was, too, it was so sudden because it wasn't like, I mean, Joshua was doing, like, little stuff in there to adjust, but the ending was just all of a sudden. All of a sudden, he all of a sudden it was just like was it? It was a left hook that he landed and a right hand, I believe. Yeah, and and Pavekin was gone, you know. And go and like I said, Pavekin is a tough guy to stop. I mean, I mean, he hadn't been stopped before, and Vlad is the only one. Well, to put him down legitimately, and then you know Derek Price managed to get the standing eight knockdown, which ain't really a knockdown because he didn't really. Oh, but, but, but Klitschko was like. Thrashing his ass around the ring, it was just an ugly ass fucking fight. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Vlad put him down like four fucking times, but for whatever reason, he then he said the clinches and octopus holes. But yeah, he he put him down a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, that was the only takeaway from the fight, really. Yeah, I mean, because I was like, Vlad didn't finish the guy, and I'm like, he he was part and he was ready to go. Rebecca was all types of trouble, but yeah, yeah, that fight, yeah, that was that's what gets style points. Yes. <laughs> Made a good fight, adjusted, came back, finished them off, didn't go overboard. Like he, he did what you want to see a young fighter do. It, it's a shame that he's at the level where he's only going to be fighting twice a year and shit. But he, he redeemed himself in my eyes with those two, you know, kind of yeah, average performances with Parker and uh, Tackham. Well, no, to come, I mean, well, uh, to I, calm. yeah, I like that fight. The the Parker fight, the, I think it was just both of them just didn't know how to, didn't know what to do or how to fight each other. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, there was, there was, I think there was just a whole, I, th- I think it was just a style clash and, and then the whole, and, and the game plans that just did not mesh at all. Because the funny thing is, too, because after that, both guys would have notable fights. Like, you know, True. I mean, Parker went, you know, Parker damn near almost finished Dillian White off in the last round after getting knocked out himself. Uh, and then, you know, and then Femi has this fight where he knocks Pavekin the fuck out. I and mean, then the last combination, too, 
them two right hands that Pavekin took on the right hand. Oh, his trainer jumped up on that on those rope ASAP. He was like, you know, but it was too late. Referee tried to grab him, but he he was going down anyways. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I thought the ref should have just should have let let, let, let him finish off. You know, let the fa- let, let him complete the fade. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because Pavekin was going down. <laughs> And he ended up going down anyway, and that's just poetic justice. It's like you know, yeah, man. So yeah, it was he, good. He was there getting his just desserts. Yeah, you know, for all you know, the roid knockouts, the roiding, the fucking up of other of other fights. He gets the highlight. All yeah. the highlights he had. Yeah. and he got highlighted. Oh man. Oh man. So uh, that, from that fight, where do you see? Well, I guess we'll start with him. What do you see Pavekin going from here? Um, so he's either gonna try to fight some fringe contenders or, or you know, some you know career mode guys. You know, maybe get one more and then try to fight a maybe a Brian Jennings type of you know level of fighter, or, or maybe a guy like um. Ah, you, I don't know, man. But he he got to fight someone. He got to beat someone quality to, get, to to get back in the mix of things if he's trying to right. get another title. Yeah, cause, but, cause, you know, he pushing 40, though. Yeah, because the, cause the thing with him, though, is the WBA loves getting, like making this guy number one mandatory. Like, it, it, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what it is, like, Dude, I mean, when he got dirty, he was like number one contender immediately afterwards. The shit was ridiculous. Um, I really want Rebecca to start from the bottom this time. And I think it's also time for him to come to America, too. Because, I mean, right now he's fighting on the zone platform. And as we all know, like, you know, Eddie Hearn pretty much, I think, controls all but one of the major heavyweights, including, including most of the heavyweight talent on his side to his platform. So I would like to see him come to America and get into the mix. Because frankly, I mean, it should be, let's say, Pavekin versus Big Baby or something like that. Or if you want to go to a soft touch, you know, Pavekin versus Adamek, who for whatever oh, reason- Oh, no, no, stop, stop. No, we're not going to bring that name up in 2018, bruh. Right. Nobody- He's gonna be he's gonna be fighting in like in you know almost in about ten days or so, man. You know he don't need to be. Adamic is done, bro. Like you should if you're looking for a come up in the heavyweight division, you know, you know don't go after Adamic. That's nah, mm-mm, stop. Um, <laughs> look if you want to make some noise, I will say fuck it. Fight uh um what's that nigga name uh um. The, the Southpaw cat, the Cuban dude, uh, Ortiz. Oh, Ortiz, man. And, and well, Pavek, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's part. I mean, that's part what he probably needs to do. But I want Pavek to actually. I don't want him to fight like a bullshit ass point. And all of a sudden, he's like WBA's number one mandatory guy. Oh hell no! Like he gotta. Be, that's what I'm saying. He gotta beat somebody. Like I, you know, I'm saying like fight a career mode dude. Get you a win. You know. Then okay, fight you a damn Ortiz or Brian Jennings, somebody of that caliber. Yeah, maybe man. uh, S- S- Spica, uh, S- S- Spilska. Uh, the other, the other fat Polish guy, Kanaki, the one that beat up on Charles Martin. You know, like I mean, I don't you know, know if he ah right, yeah, this nigga said beat up on ah that was a close fight, but he, he won it. But damn. You know, uh, he, he was beating them hands. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you know, half. you know, I, I don't, I don't think too highly on Charles Martin, man. Charles Martin a- agreed, but <laughs> Charles he Martin kind of held it down at the towards the end, though. But he he needed the damn start earlier. But the the opponent, the the Polish cat who beat him, that's a good fight for for prevent getting. I'll, that'd be a good ass fucking fight. Yeah, it would, but yeah, it definitely would. But it's just, I mean, you know, and, and I don't think Pavekin has any politics standing in his way of you know going and fighting on whatever platform because I don't think he he, he hasn't signed with the Zone yet. I mean, as far as I know, he doesn't have any exclusive deals with them. Um, you know, so like I said, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely 
he can definitely make these fights, but you know, he's also like 39 years old. And you, 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 you and you and you think about it, like you know, Perkin has been around for a minute. Like he's not. I mean, you would like to say you know he's he's from this generation. No, he's from he's from the previous generation of heavyweights, man. He's probably the last man standing from that from that right. era, man. Since Vlad retired, I mean, you, it's a trip. It's a trip. That I mean, this this a guy who you know. Think about it. He fought Chris Bird, right? And for I've seen Rockman, you know. So I mean, he's been and he knocked out both of them, you know. So I mean, he's been around for a long ass. He's, time. This is pretty much his third era heavyweights. If you want, yeah, you know I mean, if you want to keep it real, yeah. He got the tail end of the uh, the, the uh, those heavyweights with Lennox Lewis and them, right? Then he got his own era where the Klitschko brothers were reigning even between fucking breaks. Right. Then he got this new era came through and you saw the emergence of Joshua, Ortiz, Wilder. The end of David Hay, you know, all this. Yeah, I mean, yeah David Hay. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, he's, he's been around for a minute. And like I said, I mean, age, I mean, Eventually, age will catch up to you, and it's gonna catch up to this dude right here. So I mean, he doesn't have that much time left. If he wants to make another run at a title, you know, at somebody, depending on who's gonna be the heavyweight champion by the time he's actually, he actually makes those type of moves, you know. <laughs> yep. But what uh, about that's what in, bro. <laughs> right. So now, where do you see um, Joshua going with now? Shit, he need to just chill and see what happened after uh, Wilder Fury, bro. Yeah, I hear you because I'm, because I mean, I'm from, I, from what I understand, yeah, because right now it's hard to, like, it's hard to like figure out where he's actually going to go because there's, there's other X factors, such as the Wilder Fury fight. Apparently, there's a rematch clause in that fight, you know, so it's like if for what Wild Fury, yeah. You know, when Bobby's well, done with Fury, Fury's not going to want a rematch. Yeah. No, I mean, you know, he just never Fury will make it to the fight. What's that? I don't even, I'm not even sure if Fury makes it to the fight, man. Like, well, let's put it this way, man. I, I hope unless, do, unless, but... unless Fury can come in under 240, I, I, I you know, uh, and I'm, I'm positive that Wilder's gonna knock. Me. And you know me, I don't. You know I don't think highly of Wilder's boxing. You know, you 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 heard me refer to him. You you heard me refer to him as the like the um the heavyweight Randall Bailey. You know, like I said, you know, he will get outboxed and rescue himself with one right hand. That's how I that's how I see him fight. Yeah, that's what that it is, it, it, and it's a consistent pattern. So, and for me to say that he can knock out Fury. Who is a better boxer, if not, a, but not a better puncher or anything like that? You know, that speaks. You know, that speaks volumes on that. Uh, so, man, I can't say Fury a better boxer than Wilder, man. Like he more comfortable in his, his um movements and shit. Like he got the herky jerky, herky jerky, awkward movements and shit. But if 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 Fury was a regular sized dude, if, if Fury was like six two, six one, career mode. But yeah, I, I, but I also don't think he'd be fighting the way he does now. <laughs> that's for six two. That's you know. Whereas Wilder, I think is just is is is. I mean, he will get KO'd one day. I mean, there, there, there's no there's there's no doubt in my mind he will get KO'd. Somebody. We're counting the fuck out of him. Someone will. And, and, and Doctor has the best shot of doing it. So I feel like, hey, we need this. That's the fight to see because when you when you just when you remove all of that other shit, no other heavyweight really made themselves like, yeah, I'm that guy. I need to fight Joshua. But you know, besides Wilder, like, okay, right. we give Dylan White his props. He he deserves a title shot, no doubt. He deserves a fucking title shot. He's been on his grizzly. He's been on his grind. But okay, after him, it's like, who else? Like we we need to start seeing these guys fight each other and 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 and, and stand out from the rest of the pack. Like it would be nice to see 
a Dylan White fighter. Um, let me see, like a Brian Jennings or a uh, um, uh, 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 Big Baby Miller. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the thing because I mean, heavyweight right now is really top heavy. It's, it's it's super top heavy right now. It's not, and then like I said, the the mid and the low level heavyweights don't really fight each other like that to really, you know, decide who's gonna be so who's gonna be the next couple of contenders. And like I said, Dillian, it's a, Dillian White is probably the closest because he actually beat a right. himself. But the problem was is you know. And, and White, if I'm not mistaken, is a WBA mandatory. So, if um, if Femi and Wilder don't connect on their next fights, you know, barring any fuckery that goes on with Fury and um, Wilder, then White will step. White will face the man. It was you think, I think he said like in March or April, and Femi pretty much knocked the dude cold the first time around, and White I don't think has really improved. <laughs> Anything. I don't think so either, but who who knows, man? He get, he gave a good account of himself in the first fight, and he was pretty much Joshua's best opponent for like for a little minute, and he actually buzzed Joshua a couple times in that fight. Like yeah. he he earned the chance. Like I don't know if he's gonna do any better, but I don't think he's gonna do any worse. Like, <laughs> but he the only person who really. You know, he's at the top of the pack. But I feel like it'd be nice if he could get a win over a Brazil or or a, a, or a Big Baby Miller or one of these other guys floating around in the top 10 that just kind of really be that top dude. Like, okay, I'm that guy. I deserve to fight whoever become the undisputed champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, you know, this is where probably a tournament will probably need to come into play, but that's just, that's a whole nother, uh, yeah. to, <laughs> you know, trying to get these niggas to actually cooperate with each other to actually get shit done. You know, that in boxing, that's just it's like, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack sometimes, man. <laughs> you know. <Can't> so, find it. <laughs> but yeah, man, like I said, I mean, heavyweight division, man, it's, uh, I mean, it has the attention that it hasn't had in a while, but it's just like people are going to get frustrated. People, you know, if these fights don't get made, I mean, Wilder and Wilder and Femi is the fight right now at heavyweight to make. If not, the only other acceptable fight is either has to have Fury in the, you know, has to have, you know, Fury and Femi. Right. Those, are, those are the only heavyweight fights that me, that, that are worth a damn right now. And, and Dylan White is the dark horse. Like he's the only other guy where, if any of the top dudes fought, fought if any of the champions fought him, I wouldn't even. I, I'd be like, I right, like okay. Yeah, but the only uh, really the only real acceptable fight after the uh, uh, Wilder Joshua or Joshua Fury. Or, or Fury, anybody, or, or who, whoever out of that three. And meanwhile, all the other heavyweights, y'all need to just, you know, shoot them fades with each other, man, and, and play king of the hill. Like, get get to the top of the hill and say that, hey, is my my shot next at the titles? Like, everybody just want to fight career, career mode cats and then spin the bottle, take a chance on one, one top ten, one top you know, top 15 dude and didn't think they deserve a title shot. Yeah, man. That's that's how it goes, man. You know, people don't want people don't want to really work for their title shots no more. Well, risky. Yeah. You know, just like get rich quick or get title quick type of scenarios and then, you know, and then try to, you know, in order to try to control their own, I won't say control the title, but make it more favorable to whatever they want to do. And it's not really conducive to boxing, you know? Right. Um, Especially when these niggas fighting once and twice a year and shit. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, you know but uh, what can you do, man? You know, it's, huh. I mean, you either have to wait for them to start losing or, you know, you know, or sele- natural selection will weed them out <laughs> at some point. What? Yeah, man. Heavyweight division, man. Ain't nothing like it, man. <laughs> 